and for today's Full Stack Tech Talk, I'll be discussing the differences between relational and non-relational databases. So today, uh, we'll cover some database basics, compare SQL versus NoSQL database systems, and what factors to consider when choosing which one to use. So first off, what is a database? It's a collection of information organized for efficient retrieval. Uh, relational database management systems are gener generally referred to as SQL databases. Some examples are Oracle, MySQL, PostgreSQL, and mm -hmm. SQLite. Non-relational database management systems are generally referred to as NoSQL. Some examples are MongoDB, Redis, Aerospike, and Couchbase. Um, so the CAP theorem applies to both relational and non-relational databases. Um, the first one, C, consistency, ensures that all nodes see the same data at the same time. Availability ensures that every request gets a response of either success or failure. And P is partition tolerance, which ensures continued functionality even if an instance of a database fails. Uh, so this chart shows different SQL and NoSQL databases and how the CAP theorem applies to each. You'll see how um, SQL databases tend to focus on consistency and availability. Um, and NoSQL databases generally favor consistency and partition tolerance or availability and partition tolerance. Uh, so relational database management systems, they're organized and defined and structured schemas. Normalization of data is the process of storing data in columns and tables to minimize redundancy. Uh, reliable relational databases are ACID compliant. Um, so atomicity means that modifications follow an all or nothing rule. Consistency means that only valid data is written to the database. Isolation requires multiple simultaneous transactions do not impact each other's execution. And durability ensures that any transactions committed to the database are not lost. And we all know our beloved SQL. Um, but wasn't that, not, wasn't that enough? Um, no. So SQL databases have been around since the 1970s, and they're still really popular to use. But why aren't they enough? Um, but why? So I have something here. So this site sh is the Internet Live Stats, and you can see that there's just so much data being exchanged through users on the Internet every day, every second. So you see like Google searches per just today, three million. Is that million or billion? <laughs> billion, three billion. <laughs> videos viewed on YouTube, photos uploaded on Instagram. It's just tons of data. <laughs> so, okay. So data storage needed to evolve to handle this increased traffic, and how does that happen? Oh, this is just in case the website wasn't working. Um, so non-relational databases. So in NoSQL databases, information is stored in a dynamic, non-normalized, and schemaless manner. Distributed databases means that there are multiple instances of a database. So NoSQL databases are designed to be distributed more than relational ones because they do not have joins, and data can be stored in a flexible manner. Um, NoSQL databases follow the base system. So basically available means that everything may not be available at a given time, um, soft state means that there may always be changes occurring due to eventual consistency, which is achieved when the database stops receiving inputs. So these are a couple NoSQL databases. Um, so there are four major types of non-relational databases which specify how data is stored. Um, key value pairs are stored in a big hash table. Column oriented is a two-dimensional array of key value pairs. Document storage is similar to key value, but there's some structure or encoding, such as XML or JSON. And graph-based are like trees with edges, nodes, and properties, so there's no indexes. So now for a database showdown. Um, <laughs> but both SQL and NoSQL are great in their own way. OK, so one comparison would be their design. So as we said, SQL databases have strict schemas. NoSQL have no schemas and they're more document oriented. Um, CRUD queries for SQL databases, there's a, there, it has their own light declarative language, which is SQL, structured query language, and um, NoSQL does not have a standard interface. 
transactions between SQL and NoSQL databases are very different. So the base system for NoSQL is diametrically opposed to SQL's ACID compliance. Um, ACID is very pessimistic and forces consistency at the end of every operation, while base is optimistic and accepts that the database consistency may be in a state of flux. So how to choose? Uh, some important questions to ask yourself when choosing between NoSQL and SQL is what kind of data will you have and how will you store it? If you know that you'll have a lot of unstructured data or maybe receiving a lot of aggregate information with nesting such as HTML or hierarchical data, a NoSQL database may be a better idea. Uh, relational data would require a lot of tables and a lot of joins and that would require a lot of more costly energy to pull back in aggregate. Um, if you know that you have um, data that can be smartly structured, a SQL database may be more efficient. They are more space efficient because there's no redundancy for no normalization. Uh, and if possible, if you can anticipate what kind of growth you may have with your web application, you can anticipate whether to use a SQL or a NoSQL one. So generally, Horizontal scaling, meaning more instances of a database, means NoSQL would be a better choice. Versus if you have moderate manageable growth with data that's not really changing in structure, then SQL systems may be better. Or you could use some both. Um, so an interesting case study is Craigslist. So they use both SQL and NoSQL. Um, they use MongoDB to store their archive data and MySQL to hold active information about their current listings. So they managed to segment data in MongoDB that mitigates some of the, seg uh, the schema migration. Um, there's no hard and fast rule for choosing one over the other, but understanding both types and what kind of data you have and how you aim to store it is something that you'll need to consider when making the choice. So here are some references and further reading. Uh, thanks for listening and hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>